Hi, I'm Roxanne Richardson, and this is Technique Tuesday. The spiral twist sock toe is worked with four evenly spaced decreases, which spiral around the foot. Now, it differs from other spiral sock toes with evenly spaced decreases because these spirals are more horizontal and they travel around the sock toe. So you can compare that to this more standard spiral sock toe where the decrease lines are more vertical and they don't cross paths with each other. So if you enjoy trying out different sorts of sock toes, you might find this one to be fun and interesting. Like other sock toes, this one isn't inherently any better uh, than other sock toes and it can be modified to accommodate different toe shapes. So this is the, the toe as it is written in the needlework books I found that explain this toe. This one is a little blunter. And then this one is blunter still. It has grafting across the top. These two don't require any grafting and this one does have grafting. So I will demonstrate this toe and then when we get to the point where you wanna make a decision about the bluntness of your toe, I will talk you through that. So let's get started. So this is my little swatch. I'm ready to start working the toe and I wanna divide up the round. And now I'm working with magic loop so I have half of the stitches on one needle and half on the other. So it's pretty easy for me to mark the quarters. I just need to mark in the middle. If you're working on double points, if you have your stitches divided up onto four double points, that's great. Just mark where your beginning of round is. Uh, if you're working on double points and you have them distributed on three separate needles, then I would suggest marking each of the quarters because um, it's not gonna be as obvious. So I'm gonna count off 16 stitches and place a marker because I have 64 stitches on my needle. So that's 16 stitches right there. And I'm gonna do it again on this side. For the first round, I am going to decrease the first two stitches of each one of these sections together. I'm gonna to use a left-leaning decrease. So you can use SSK or you can use SKP, the slip one, knit one, pass slip stitch over. Either one will work, uh, but you do need to do a left-leaning decrease, not a knit two together. So I'm gonna slip two stitches one at a time as if to knit, insert through those two stitches through the front and decrease them together. And I will repeat that for each of these sections. As I said, you can use any left-leaning decrease you like. So you could do slip one as if to knit, knit the second one and slip that stitch over if you prefer. That's your preferred method of doing a left-leaning decrease. After we complete a decrease round, we're gonna work a plain round. So we're just gonna knit all of the stitches, uh, no decreases in this round. When we do the next round, we're not working the first two stitches together like we did the first time. The stitch that became the decrease is just worked on its own. What we're going to do now is work the next pair of stitches together. So the first round, we worked the first two stitches together. The next decrease round, we're working what was originally the third and fourth stitch. Uh, the third decrease round, we'll work together what was originally uh, the fifth and sixth stitch, et cetera. So we look at where the previous decrease was worked and we make sure to work that stitch as a knit stitch and then we can decrease the next two stitches together. So once again, after we slip the marker, we're going to work this stitch that had been decreased before and then it's the next two stitches that are worked together.
and we'll repeat that for the second half of the round as well. After that second decrease round is completed, then we work another plain round. Now we're ready to start our third decrease round. We've got our, our first decrease round here, a plain round, another decrease, we've got a plain round. So we, we're always decreasing to the left of the previous decrease. So we, since we have two decreases already, we're gonna work those first two stitches plain. And now we're gonna decrease these two stitches together. So once again, we'll do that for the other sections as well. We're gonna work the first two stitches and then we're gonna work a decrease. We'll repeat this for the second half of the round and then we'll follow that with a plain round just as we have for the previous decrease rounds. So I am at the, at the point where I'm about to decrease the last two stitches in this section. If you are working with a multiple of eight stitches, like 64 or 72 or 80, then you will have two stitches remaining at the end of this section that you can decrease together. If you are working with a multiple of four stitches that is not a multiple of eight, like 60 or 68, something like that, you're going to have just one stitch left here. And so what you need to do is to move your markers one stitch over uh, to the left so that you can complete the section um, with both of those stitches. So you can work this with multiple of four. Like I said, uh, it is easiest if you are working with a multiple of eight and it's probably the easiest if you're working with a multiple of 16 like I am with, a with 64 stitches. So I'm down to those last two and I work them together. And once again, you're gonna do this for the entire round and then follow it with a plain round. So at this point, we have eliminated half of the stitches in each of the section or half of the stitches for the entire sock. And the spiral needs to continue working across. And so this spiral here is going to start um, at the beginning of this section over here, this spiral here, is going to start at the beginning of this section. This spiral here is going to start here. And this final spiral is going to be at the beginning of, of the round. However, we're not going to work this spiral until we get to the end of the round and start again. And that's to keep, just to keep these spirals on uh, every other round. If we start this, new spiral at the beginning of this section, it will be around earlier than it should be with relation to this other one. So what you might wanna do to remind yourself of the spiral that sort of starts the spiraling is uh, mark it in the fabric. So this marker will remind you that when it's a decrease round, you're going to start with this spiral. So I'm gonna work across all of these stitches here. I'm not gonna decrease any of these, um, but I'm gonna do my first decrease in the second section. Now we've come back to the beginning of the round and we need to do our fourth decrease in this first section. So we're gonna continue this same process of following a plain round with a decrease round. If you want a broader finish to your toe, then we will stop doing decreases when we have about a third of what we started with. I started with 64 stitches, so if I want a broader toe, I will keep decreasing until I'm down to 20 stitches, and then I will make my next decision. 
I've taken my markers off the needle just because they're kind of getting in the way. And then from this point on, I'm just going to rely on visually looking at the previous decrease. So I can see the decrease in the fabric and I can see that I have one stitch above it. So that tells me that this is time for a decrease uh, and that I need to do that decrease after this decrease. So um, this is my beginning spiral line that I'm working on right here. So I work those first two stitches, then I work a decrease, and then those last two. And so that means I have five stitches in this section. So this will be my final round um, to bring me down to a third of the stitches. Once again, I look for the decrease under the needle to tell me where that I need to go to the left of that decrease. So I've ended the round, but I haven't ended um, my decreases for the spirals. So now I'm at the point where I can make a decision about if I want a broader top to the toe. So at this point, I can either make a decision to graft the toe. If I'm going to graft, I will work these five stitches until here, and then I can graft the front to the back, the instep or the, yeah, the instep to the sole. If I want to keep spiraling, but I want a broader toe, this is the point where I can start doing decreases every round. So this is an example where I continued doing them every other round till I was down to eight stitches. And this is an example where when I got down to a third of the stitches, then I chose to graft them. So for this sample, I'm going to choose to continue doing the decreases, but I'm going to do them every round rather than every other round. First, I am going to do my final plain round and then I'm going to start doing them every round. Now I'm going to do them every round. This first uh, round is going to be just like the others. Uh, I'm going to uh, work the stitch that was previously decreased and then I'm going to decrease these two stitches together. And I will repeat that for the other three sections. Once again, I've, my spiral has hit the end of a section. So I wanna move this. And now we're, I'm going to work across all of these stitches because my first decrease is going to be the stitch after this. So I'm gonna work across all of these. And then I'm gonna take this marker and bring it over here just so that I can um, see it. So 
So I'm going to do my first decrease here. Then I see this previous decrease that I had worked and I'm going to do the one right next to it because remember we're not doing a plain round. Um, and then I can see my other decrease right there. So I work those two stitches, work my decrease here. Work those two stitches and then work my decrease here. Uh, and now I'm going to just keep doing the same thing. I'm going to keep looking for my previous decrease, uh, which is right here. So I'm going to work that one. And then I'm going to work those two together. So when they get stacked really, you know, close to each other, it gets a little bit trickier um, to, to realize what's going on. But here's my previous decrease. So I knit that one and then I work those two together. I see my previous decrease. I work it. I work those two together. I work that one and then I work those two together. So what have I got left? I now have eight stitches left. This is the point where I can fasten things off. So I've run the, the yarn tail through once. You can run it through a second time or you can go down and then back up across, pull it tight and then go back down through the center. That will help to, uh, to lock the round um, as well. These are the three different versions. This is the original version where you do your plain rounds after every decrease round till you're down to eight. This is one where once I got to a third of the number of stitches, I worked uh, decreases every round, um, makes it a little shorter. And again, you could choose to start doing decrease rounds earlier than that if you wanted something broader. This will um, stretch out, you know, fairly broad for, for toes, um, but you could experiment with that. And then this is the one where when I got down to a third of the stitches, I grafted them um, across instead. So it's really a personal preference as to which way you want to do it. Now, these give different toe lengths depending on how many rounds you end up working. So in order to know when to start your sock toe, you need to know how many rounds long that sock toe is going to be. And then you use your row gauge to figure out how long that would actually be. So I've got some worksheets um, that help you figure that out that I will link to down in the video description. If you're interested in my source for this sock toe, I found it first in this Encyclopedia of Needlework, which is published in the late 19th century, and then it was republished again and again over the um, decades. And that sock toe is right here with the instructions in this short paragraph right here. I also saw it in a Dutch needlework book that a viewer sent me. Both books, this one and the Dutch version, are in the public domain. They are scanned and available online in case you're interested in looking at them. And I will leave links down in the description. If you have any comments or questions about today's video or suggestions for videos you'd like to see in the future, you can leave those down in the comments below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.